Hello lovely people, welcome to another episode of Book Chat. I have three books to talk about this week, shall we just dive into it? We have a little bit of a mix, um, one fiction and two non-fiction. I will start off with my fiction, that is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Um, I was a little bit trepidatious going into this book because I just had heard that it's um, quite dark because it's her first foray into adult fantasy. Um, I knew that there is a lot of stuff that is worth uh, researching trigger warnings about and I 100% do agree with that, yes. Um, so I was a little bit trepidatious is what I'm saying. I actually was surprised by how much I liked this book. Um, <laughs> this follows a uh, galaxy stern known as Alex. Alex can see ghosts and she's sort of recruited by this um, group at uh, Yale University um, to be part of this um, this group that sort of monitors the societies there that deal with magical things. The narrative structure of this is sort of like um, you have sort of like two different timelines and then eventually they like sync up and then you go forward from that point. So um, the, the contemporary timeline is following Alex. There is uh, a girl is killed on campus and she's trying to figure out what's happened. Um, I will say it takes quite a, a bit of time to get to that point. It took about like 100 pages to get to that actually happening. I didn't mind this because I felt like I was sort of like um, learning the world. I'm not familiar with like Yale or anything like that. So it was sort of like immersing me in that and getting to know it. I can see people who, who struggle with the pacing of this. I do see that as like a valid critique. The sort of flashback timeline follows another character called Darlington who is sort of the guy who's showing Alex the ropes. So we're sort of flashing between like Alex at contemporary point and then back to like her first entering into this space and learning the ropes and that sort of thing. And then it sort of becomes like this m trying to solve this mystery of what's happened to this girl on campus and then also you're getting hints that there's some other mysteries and stuff that's gone on and that sort of thing. Um, I think the I think the reason I had more fun reading this than I had expected is because I do like a good mystery book. I like, I enjoyed the process of sort of like being given more information and trying to piece together what happens. Um, when it comes to the resolution of this book, like the pacing definitely picked up towards like the latter half of the book and I really enjoyed having that quicker pacing. I did like um, having it slower at the start because I felt like I was like immersing myself in the world building but then I did also enjoy when it like picked up and we started to get um, answers or rather more pieces of the puzzle to try and be like what is happening. Um, when it comes to the actual conclusion um, I enjoyed the faster pace of the ending. I felt a little bit like we had a bit of a little bit too much villain monologuing and um, there's sort of there's another aspect which I can't really talk about without it being a huge spoiler. Um, if you're someone who's read the book and would like to talk about that, do let me know. Happy to have a chat in the comments. It felt a little bit... There were some elements with how this like villain monologuing moment happened that I was a bit like, eh. But um, on the whole, I did enjoy it. I would say um, definitely look into trigger warnings. I'm going to link um, a review down below which I saw which sort of listed out a number of trigger warnings and I'll link that so that you can have a look because um, there is some very um, seriously heavy stuff um, that happens in this. I don't feel like I can speak to the quality of representation there because these are all things which I've never dealt with myself, therefore like I don't think me saying they didn't strike me as being badly handled isn't a very useful thing for me to say because it's not a topic that I feel confident being an authority on whether they're handled well. I know that Lee Bardugo has said that she's drawn on a lot of like her own experiences and stuff like that, which I see. Um, it's just from briefly going through Goodreads and other people's reviews, I saw um, a number of people who were saying that they'd experienced some of these things and they felt like it was handled really well and they liked the way that Alex is like a survivor and that sort of thing and the way that that um, framed, the way that that was framed and the way that it like 
in the way that the character like experienced things and dealt with things and that sort of stuff. On the other side of it, I have also seen some people who said that they didn't think it was handled well at all. I don't want to sound like a complete cop-out, but I feel like it's important to recognise when you yourself are not necessarily the authority on a subject or well-educated on a subject. So I'm just throwing that out there that definitely there is stuff on this which would be triggering, and I do very much recommend looking into that on your own accord. Back onto the actual book itself. Um, I felt like this book did not have the hugest amount of dialogue in it. I was actually quite gripped and I was um, finding it really interesting learning more about like the magic systems in this um, and that sort of thing. So the lack of dialogue didn't hugely bother me because I felt I was just happy like going with it and seeing where it goes. Um, if you're a person who doesn't always necessarily want to read books that are like lots and lots of description and stuff like that then this might not be for you. My final critique that I think I would have is that occasionally I felt like there were moments where like points could have been made slightly more than they were made. So there were mo like an example of one is that like a character says to Alex, he's essentially like these societies and stuff. It's like you're giving these rich entitled teenagers like the keys to a hugely fast car and just like letting them have a crash because it's like why do these why are you allowing these kids who have all this entitlement have never really had to think about the consequences of their actions why are you allowing them access to this hugely powerful stuff like of course bad things are going to happen as a result and it's one of those things where there were a moment for, for varying different topics there were moments like that where like someone would voice something or like a point would be like pointed out and voiced but then also I was like I don't feel like we necessarily really went anywhere with that point it was like here's an observation and then it was like but are we going to do anything with it but part of me wonders if that might be stuff that we're going to explore more because there is a sequel to this that's going to come out at some point so I'm sort of like withholding judgment on those for now because I'm going to be interested to see like where are we going with this sequel? Um, I actually do really want to read the sequel. Like, I got very gripped by this. It's one of those books that I found myself when I had to like work and not read the book. I found myself thinking about it and trying to muddle out stuff. Um, so I did. I. It's one of these things. Like, I feel like I've said a bunch of negative stuff about this book. I would like to be clear that I personally enjoyed this book. It's just also one of those things where sometimes you read a book. You know, sometimes you read a book and you really enjoy it, but equally. I could talk to someone who hated this book and I could completely understand why they did. I don't know, it's like a strange experience thing, but I personally was surprised by how much I enjoyed it, partly because my reading experience of Lee Bardugo has been a little bit mixed, so I didn't really enjoy Shadow and Bone. I thought it was fine, but it didn't like grip me, I didn't, haven't continued with the series and that hasn't bothered me. I did really enjoy Six of Crows. The thing I felt about Six of Crows was I felt like the characters should have been like 25 when they were actually like much younger and I think maybe that's something that I liked about this is that these were older characters, like yeah we're still in like college, is that what you call it in America? University. Um, so you're still like university aged but I, f I think I enjoy Leah Bardugo writing adult characters <laughs> rather than like teenagers um which is again i really like six of crows i would like to say that it's just they struck me as they should have been much older than they were actually portrayed to be so um i actually really enjoyed this foray into adult fiction for her and i would actually really like to read the second book um it's just i see this is not for everyone and i really would like to emphasize again read the trigger warnings before you go in um the other two books completely different so the next book I want to talk about is My Life in France by Julia Child um, with Alex Proudhon. I might have said that sort of wrong, I'm very sorry, my little Bristolian mouth mangles French and it makes me very sad. Um, this is uh, Julia Child's book written with her nephew. Um, I really enjoyed the prologue of this because he talked about how, the experience of how they put this book together. Like um, they have all of the letters and stuff that um, Julia and her husband wrote to her husband's brother. So they had a lot of like primary letters that they could draw upon and then also um, her nephew just sort of like sat with her and initially he was recording their conversations but he found that she was too like aware of that so actually he just ended up taking notes while they talked. Um, so this was released after she died so she never actually read the final book. But it just struck me as I really appreciated getting an insight into how the book was put together because I think oftentimes when you have memoirs or autobiographies by well-known people, um, they're collaborative works. It's just some of them are more open about that collaboration than others are. 
Um, and I don't know, I just found it really interesting, like, understanding the process through which this was made. Um, I was, I'm familiar with Julia Childs because A, she's a big name in the food industry, and B, I have watched Julia and Julia, the film. Um, what was interesting is, is having watched that film, um, comparing, like, the film's portrayal with Julia's own words of what happened. So this covers um, the period of time from which, um, quite a large period of time, actually, um, when they moved to France for her husband's um, job, and then um, her time in Cordon Bleu, learning to cook, and then setting up her own cooking school, and then um, attempting to write this book, which became Mastering the Art of French Cooking. But one thing I don't think I'd entirely understood previously is how long that book took to write, the different forms through which it came, like it was this initially this huge, gigantic, intense book that then um, through varying attempts got whittled and whittled and whittled um, and then the other books that she wrote and her TV career I found it really wild that she en she's famous for these cooking shows that she did but when they recorded the first ones she'd never owned a television and she didn't really she didn't watch television so like you know she's doing these things for TV but she's never watched TV before which was just like an interesting aspect um, I thought that this was a really good food memoir. I She spends a lot of time talking about food, which made me really hungry and really want to eat French food. Um, but I'm also really glad that I read this after I've now been to Paris. You can read this without having been to Paris, absolutely. Paris is a place that we have such ideas about that, and it's been portrayed in so many pieces of media that, you know, even if you've never been, you have, like, a sense. I just quite liked some of the time when she was talking about things. I was like, oh, you know what she's talking about? That sort of thing. It was just, like, a nice personal aspect for me. Um, but on the whole, I found this very readable. I read it, I read this a lot, like, um, I read before I go to sleep as part of my, like, winding my brain down process, and this was a very good book for that. This made me a bit too much, like, thinking about trying to solve the mystery, blah, blah, blah. This was, like, super soothing, reading it before you go to sleep type of thing. And just, like, the joy of food. Like, Julia Child has such, like, an analytical approach to food. Like, when they're working on these recipes, she wants to get everything so exact. She wants to understand everything in such detail. So she's able to give you such detail about food and how these things work. But equally, it's tempered by this this absolute joy of the food that then makes this really nice combination because you have like deep deep understanding and knowledge but that might get a bit too much without this absolute sheer love of food and joy that comes in with it so yeah I really enjoyed this I thought it was a really excellent piece of food writing and um, I feel like I've got a much better understanding of like both her process and her food and that sort of thing the final book is a book that is a little bit out of my comfort zone. Again, along with Night's House, who am I? Um, this is Ancient Land, Sacred Whale, The Inuit Hunt and Its Rituals by Tom Lowenstein. This is um, a bit of anthropology, I think is the correct term. I've never read anthropology before, so I might be wrong. Although the back calls it poetic ethnography. Don't know what that is. Um, essentially, I picked this up in a second-hand shop on a whim. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone. It was very interesting. It's um, Tom Lowenstein is an anthropologist. He spent a lot of time with the Tikigak people who are indigenous to um, we Point Hope in Alaska is sort of where they live. The introduction told me they are the oldest continuously settled Native American site on the continent. Um, and this sort of is... Um, it's all based around the sacred whale hunt. This is kind of a mix of him describing to you um, as like an outsider perspective, like for example, like what is a tiki cat house like? How is it like physically? There's like a tunnel and thing and stuff like that. He had two people who are um, like storytellers. So there are portions of the text which are as if the two of them are telling these tales and it alternates between their voices. Um, but obviously this is a construction by Tom Lowenstein rather than a direct, um, like, written down exactly as they said it type thing. Um, then there are, there are also bits which are, um, like, poetry. So it's sort of like this um, mix of different forms that run throughout. Um, it was very interesting. One thing that I will say is, is that um, as I set myself back in my um, birthday reading goals video, um, I am trying to prioritise going forward reading own voices stuff. 
this was interesting. It introduced me to a lot of things that I don't know anything about. I would say that going forward I will be prioritising reading own voices stuff because um, as I was reading this, even these moments which are given to me as if it is these two men telling the story, bouncing off of each other, that sort of thing, I'm aware that this is a construction by Tom Lowenstein, not like a direct record of how these stories were told to him or that sort of thing. So I think what I'm trying to say is like, an interesting book to read on a topic that I know nothing about in like a genre anthropology type stuff which I don't really read very often. Going forward when I'm looking to get a better understanding of indigenous people both from America but then also other places um, I will be prioritising reading own voices books as much as possible because I feel like that's the most um, you know authentic way to get an understanding of a person and their culture is to read a book by a person from the culture rather than like an outsider going in if that makes sense. So yes a slight melding of genre in this week's book chat but as per usual I would love to know if you've read any of these I would love to hear your thoughts on them anything you want to say or more please do leave a comment down below otherwise I will see you next time for something different.